In this video, we'll discuss considerations for choosing a security protocol for your Wi-Fi network. Each Wi-Fi network type supports a differing array of security protocols that attempt to block nefarious attacks by encrypting data and protecting communications. And every protocol has its own set of vulnerabilities. During network creation, Ruckus 1 defaults the security protocol setting to the recommended protocol to help you get your network up and running quickly. But it's important to know what each security protocol does so that you can make an informed choice if changing the protocol selection. WPA2 is recommended and is the default because it provides strong Wi-Fi security that's mandatory on all mobile devices manufactured after 2006. Meaning, clients using older devices can connect to the network. It introduced the Advanced Encryption System, AES, to replace the more vulnerable Temporal Key Integrity Protocol used by WPA. The WPA2 method is especially useful in cases where the passphrase is very complex, in cases where you will be using dynamic pre-shared keys, and in enterprise AAA networks. WPA3 supports the evolving landscape of wireless networks, including 6 GHz radios, and network security. Notable security enhancements include Simultaneous Authentication of Equals, or SAE. Here, SAE passphrase replaces the pre-shared key passphrase as a more secure key establishment protocol between devices that protects against third-party password guessing attempts and ensures that even if a passphrase is guessed, the hacker cannot decrypt your current or prior packets. It also includes Management Frame Protection 802.11w, which encrypts the management frames between the end-user device and the access point, such as authentication, deauthentication, um, association, disassociation, beacons, and probe frames that are used by wireless clients to find and connect to the right Wi-Fi network and manage the client connection after a successful association. While more secure than WPA2, it's not yet been widely adopted by device manufacturers, meaning backwards compatibility is not guaranteed for every device. Now, as of July 1, 2020, WPA3 is mandatory for all new Wi-Fi certified devices, but keep in mind, not all new devices get Wi-Fi certified. So, WPA3 is a good choice if you know that your network devices and end-user clients are all newer Wi-Fi certified devices. Otherwise, clients cannot connect and end-user experience will suffer. WPA3, WPA2 Mixed Mode, as the name implies, supports both WPA2 and WPA3 compliant devices on the same network. This is commonly known as WPA3 Transition Mode. Ruckus 1 enhances security for mixed mode networks by requiring configuration of separate WPA2 and WPA3 SAE passphrases. So, if your access point supports both WPA2 and WPA3, and end-user client devices are likely to be a mix of older and newer devices, then the WPA3, WPA2 mixed mode option may be a good choice. Now, while this sounds like the best of both worlds, this is not the recommended solution due to client driver issues and age of devices, which are outside of the network administrator's control. WPA is a step above WEP using Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, which dynamically generates a new key for each packet of data. WPA supports legacy devices which don't support the newer WPA2 protocol, devices likely manufactured prior to 2006. WEP was the original standard for encryption and used only 64-bit and 128-bit fixed key encryption. Although functional, WEP does have security vulnerabilities that can be easily exploited. The Wi-Fi Alliance officially retired WEP in 2004, 
but WEP is still offered in Ruckus One to aid administrators whose Wi-Fi networks contain very old devices that are difficult or costly to replace. But keep in mind, these networks should not be used to transport sensitive information. Given the more secure protocol options available, Ruckus recommends against using the WEP security protocol whenever possible. And that brings us to the end of this video on choosing a security protocol for your Wi-Fi network.